Good day, good day, good day, good day. Uh, welcome to our video. In this video, I'll attempt to try this uh, physical science paper 2 from Lipopo province from uh, September 2023. So, in this uh, video, I'll be attempting to do the whole paper. So, without wasting any time, I'm going to go straight to the first question, which will be the multiple choice. So, when we go to the first question, they're giving us, um, as we will anticipate, they're going to give us uh, 10 questions, which uh, each will be worth 2 marks. So, the first question uh, will be worth 20 marks because each question will be 2 marks, 2 marks, 2 marks each. I always advise, I feel like this is probably the easier part because if you know your theory and also your calculations, then multiple choice becomes so easy to solve. So when you get a question, uh, you need to at least go through it step by step before you write the answer. So let's just go straight to this one. So first thing first, you must identify which topic of chemistry uh, is the question linked to. So 1.1.1, which one of the following pairs represents compounds that are isomers? First of all, you ask yourself what are isomers? Remember, isomers are those uh, molecules which will share the same um, molecular formula but then they can have the different structural formula so now we need to look at this all options which are given to us let's look at the first one first one uh we've got ch there and ch there okay so one thing for sure we've got one carbon and also one carbon in the other one also we've got one hydrogen and also one hydrogen that's fine now this is where the problem that we have three chlorines and three bromines. Remember, they must have the same molecular formula. So, meaning each must have the same carbon, same hydrogen, and also same uh, chlorine or same uh, bromine. Because here they've got Cl, they've got Br. So, C and H are fine. But the problem is that the halogens which they're having are different. We can't have different halogens for an isomer. So, A is out. Then now you go for the second one now. Carbon, on this one, we've got one carbon, we've got two carbons. I won't, I won't even waste time. Two carbons out. They both must have the same carbons. And the other one is having well, one carbon, two, two carbons, so it's out, this one. Let's just also look for other things besides carbons. Hydrogens, we've got three, one, we've got four hydrogens here. Here we've got three, two, six hydrogens. Also, they've got different hydrogens, so it's out. Let's, uh, let me try to save time now and move along. C, we've got on the left, we've got one, two, three. We've got three carbons there. On the right, one, two, three, three carbons as well. Okay, that's fine. Then this side, how many um hydrogens? We've got one, two, that's four, that's six, six hydrogens. Here we've got three and also six hydrogens. So now we need to check now. Because the aim is to ensure that we've got the same carbons and also same hydrogens now. So let's check. We've got three carbons, also three carbons. There we can see that we've got um four, six, six hydrogens, also six hydrogens. So okay, this one looks like it might be an isomer. So I'll just leave this one as a question mark. I want to check the last one as well and see if uh, we can eliminate it. Or what? But so far, this one looks promising. Let's look at this last one. On the left, we've got one, two, three, three carbons. One, two, three, three carbons. Okay. Hydrogens, we've got three, six, six hydrogens. Three, two, one, six hydrogens. Now, we've got two and two. Now, the question is, remember, isomers that we are mostly familiar with, we've got ketone and aldehyde, which... Is the most common uh, functional isomer that they use ketone and aldehyde so i'm looking at this one now our functional group which is coo it's inside here our functional group which is coo and then in h meaning that it's giving us um the functional group towards the end so now one thing i can see for sure that this one looks more like a ketone this one looks more like an uh, aldehyde and you know that aldehyde and ketones are functional isomers of each other so I know already that this one is in because they are all functional isomers of each other. 
add head and key to him. So I will just pick this one as my answer. But then I want to go back to do this number C. Number C, remember we have the same carbon and also same hydrogen. Now the difference is let me just do this structure for this number C. It will be C and three H's, right? And then it's gonna be C H um one only one H there. And then the other bond will come there. The another bond will be there, which will be double bond. Then it's C H2. That's the first one, right? The second one, the double bond will be at the beginning. And then we're going to have uh H then also uh, the H there. One, two, three, four. Okay. The second one will be there. One, two, three, four. And then second one will be there. Oh yeah. Now that I've done the structural formula, it becomes easy. You see now, <laughs> they are all, if we were to name these two compounds, they all have the same name in a way because they all have got the double bond on carbon number one. So meaning it's the same name and kind of an isomer of the same name. So therefore, this just be different uh, double bond. So this will leave us with the first one, which will be number D. Because D is ketone and aldehyde. That, that's the most common isomer that you're going to get. Okay, I feel like I took too long than I thought I would. Let me go to 1.2 now. Which one of the following organic reactions will take place only when exposed to light? So now you must ask yourself, what type of reaction will be work if we use light? Remember, one of the reactions that I know that will use light is when you are doing those substitution reactions, which are uh, the substitution reaction which will require the use of light as a, as a um, catalyst. So one thing that will require light is the type of reactions which will be substitution. We need to go and look at each which reaction will be substitution. When I look at the first one, it's C and two H's. Also C and two H's, meaning there must be a double bond there. If you're having a double bond, that becomes the addition reaction. So addition reaction won't be the one. Because the one that will have um light as a reactant will be substitution reaction. So the first one was out. Second one, we have a normal alkene. And then it's been broken down. This looks more like uh, what you get uh, with your typical um, eliminations or uh, catalytic. So it's out. So the third one, we are having a normal alkene. Then we are reacting halogen. Then the stripe, yeah, which means this will be a substitution reaction. And then the third one, again, if you're having 2H and also 2H, it's a double bond. It's an addition reaction. So remember, the one that uses light is the substitution reaction, which will involve the use of uh, having uh, two things being substituted from each other. For example, Cl will replace the H here. The H that was taken from here, uh, it will form with the other Cl to form HCl, which will be the substitution reaction. Don't forget, substitution reaction will require the use of light. So the other ones were we are having addition and also elimination reactions. So now let's quickly go to number three. So this one will be C. I forgot to put the answer. That will be C. Now. So now let's go to number three. What is the name of the reaction between an unsaturated hydrocarbon and a hydrogen gas? So basically we're having a double bond uh, where they're going to put H2 in it. So they're putting H2 on a double bond. So it's an addition reaction. And we know that the addition reaction that will require the involve of hydrogen gas is hydrogenation. That's the addition reaction which you put 2H in it. So that will be the hydrogenation. Yes, yeah, so I won't even bother with other ones because they're not a part of uh, this one. For example, halogenation is the one where we use the halogens. The hydro is where it's more along the lines of elimination. Hydration is where you are now, uh, there's water involved. So there's no water that they're talking about, which means it's only hydrogen gas, which will be hydrogenation. And then 1.4, when an alkene containing N carbons undergoes a combustion reaction in excess oxygen, the mole ratio of the combusted product CO2 and H2O will be equal to? Hmm, this one's a nice question now. So remember, they're looking for the ratio now. We know the products will be CO2 and water. So we're having a normal alkene. Remember, an alkene, probably we can just have, let's just have a typical methane, for example. A typical methane will react with oxygen, then it will form a uh, CO2 and also water. So if we were to use this reaction, for example, 
try to balance it out. On the left, we've got one carbon, one carbon on the right, four hydrogens, we've got two hydrogens. So the first thing I can put a two there to make my hydrogens four. So I've got four hydrogens and also four hydrogens on the left. Now I'll come to the left. I've got two oxygens here, and then here I've got two and plus another two. So I've got four oxygens, meaning here I must also put another two. So it means that now it becomes balanced. I've balanced my reaction now. So now they're asking about the uh, ratio of CO2 and H2O will be equal to what? So they're asking about the ratio of CO2 and uh, what do you call it? And H2O. So when you look at this now, the ratio of CO2 and H2O. CO2, I see it will be 1, which will be fine. And then uh, now this side, I'm going to have 2, meaning that uh, if N, if we make our N equals to 1, therefore here on my right, I'm going to have 1. But then now here I'm having 2, meaning for me to get 2, it must be 1 plus 1, meaning now if you look at our possible answers, remember N is 1 on the on this one, N is 1. So I come here, first of all, A, N is 1, fine. But here, H2O is 2, meaning it can be N again. It might either be N plus uh, 1 or something that will give us 2. Same thing, I come here, again, N is N. So they're all having N is N, which is fine. But the problem is this side. If N is 1, if I, I do 1 plus 2, that gives me 3. And I only have 2, which means B is also out. Then I come to the last one, N is N, which is fine. Now, remember, n will be 1 plus 1, which will give us 2, which means that uh, c will give us the ratio that they want. Because we'll be adding the other one, which will give us 2. So that's fine. So let's quickly go to, I want to actually speed up a bit. Yeah, but at least we can cover as much as we can from the paper. So let's go to 1.5. 1.5, now, remember the first question so far, it were involving organic chem. Now the question uh, looks... Like we're going to chemical equilibrium now, so it means that we're done with uh, organic chem. So let's go to uh, chemical equilibrium. So ammonia gas, NH3, and oxygen gas, they react to form that reaction. Okay. First of all, delta H is less than zero, meaning the reaction must be exothermic. Ne? So it's an exothermic reaction. And then uh, which one of the following combinations of pressure and temperature will result in an increased yield of NO. So the aim is to increase the yield of NO. And for you to increase the yield of NO, the forward direction must be favored. Ne? So whatever you do to temperature, so sorry, whatever you do to temperature and pressure, forward direction must be favored. Now we go to the factors. So the factors will be involving temperature and also pressure. So what do we know about uh, factors? We know that if you increase uh, I want to find a space where I can put this. I can just put it here. If you increase temperature, eh, you know that endothermic reaction is favored. Eh? If you decrease temperature, exothermic will be favored. Eh? That's the factor that would help us. So if with pressure, if I increase pressure, the reaction with less moles is favored. Eh? That's when I increase pressure. But if I decrease pressure, Reaction with more number of moles will be favored. No? So now I must ask myself a question. The aim is to favor the forward direction. What must I do to temper it? Because already I know from the sign they gave us, the forward direction is exothermic based on this delta H here. The forward direction is what? Exothermic. So now I must do something to temperature so that I can favor the exothermic reaction. So for me to favor the exothermic reaction, we know that I can decrease the temperature. If temperature will decrease it, therefore, exothermic, which is the forward, will be favored. So now, first thing first, decrease temperature, meaning my answer must either be this one or this one, based on temperature. Because eh? just look at the sign they give you. That the H is less than zero means that the forward will be exothermic reaction. How do I increase the yield? Forward must be favored. So how do I favor the exo? Decrease temperature, eh? based on the facts that we know about the factors. So that's one is done. So I know that it's either A or D. Now I go and to now and focus on pressure. So let's look at the number of moles that we're having. On my left side, I've got four, which is this one, plus five. So I've got nine moles. So I've got nine moles on the left. 
9 moles on the left. On the right, we've got 4 plus 6 plus 10 moles. So now you see, forward has more moles than uh, reverse. How do I remember with pressure? If I increase pressure, less moles are favored. Ne? If we decrease pressure, then what? More moles are favored. We know that the forward has got more moles. Then how do I favor the forward? I must then what? Remember, forward has got 10 moles. So how do I favor the forward now? I have to decrease the pressure. Because if I decrease pressure, more moles are favored. So for me to favor 10, I must decrease pressure. Meaning pressure must be decreased. Meaning the answer would be A. The answer would be A because both of them are being decreased. So that's how I normally eliminate the two of them. So I'm 15 minutes in and so far I'm confident with my first five answers, which is good start. <laughs> so let's continue. But we can do as much as we can. 1.6. Again, uh, I see a reaction again. So we might be going to chemical equilibrium again, which is good. So 1.6. Um, the nitrogen tetraoxide decomposes to produce nitrogen dioxide in a container and then they give us a balanced reaction. So now again, they're telling us that delta H is negative something. So that gives us a hint that the forward also will be exothermic. Ne? Sharp. So consider the following statements regarding the equation. Okay, first statement. The forward reaction is uh, forward direction is endothermic reaction. No, that's wrong. Forward direction is exo. There's all the negative sign. So it's out. That one is wrong. So every answer which will have one must be out. For example, A is having one out. B is having one out. Wait a minute. C is also having one out. What? So it means I'm left with only one answer. Which be number C? Yeah, that was quick. Because... <laughs> That's the end, so it can't be. Wow, but I can just look at the other ones because <laughs> I need to be sure. But so far, sure, that was quick to find. Okay, temperature of the container decreases. So remember now, it's an exothermic reaction, meaning temperature must decrease. That's fine. Two, it's fine. And then uh, we go to number three. For each mole of NO2 which is formed, that energy will be re yeah released. Yeah, because it's an exo. Release, it's just a... Uh, what do you call it? The heat is released during exothermic reaction. So C is the correct answer. There were two ways you can find this. You could have went through all of them. But then the quicker way was to just know that it's not end. So one is out. And the good thing that they gave us a lot of ones, three possible answers had one in them, which saved us a lot of time. I think they tried to save us time in the first one year. As long as you know your factors, it was quick to find what's happening. Okay, that's good. Let's go to number seven now. Let's go to number seven. Okay, number seven. Oh, we're going to uh, four guesses P, Q, and R. We're still in chemical equilibrium again. Uh, in equilibrium in a closed container. The diagram below shows relative concentrations over a period of time. Okay. The equilibrium position is uttered at T1. Yeah, they're changing something at T1. By addition of more gas. So they're adding more gas here. Yeah? So meaning, in other words, Something has been done to change this direction at T1. So you can see that before we're having lines which are at equilibrium. Then here something boom went up. Then it comes down again. So you see from here, when this thing goes up, P is also going up. Also R is going up. But it seems like S is going down. So something is not going well with S. That should be a hint for something. But other one seems like they're going up, which is a good thing to look at. So now the equilibrium reaction is shown by what? need to ask yourself a question now something q is being increased here but after q is increased here see now it goes down so that whatever after this thing is being done q now goes down same thing s s they're going down meaning q and s must either be reactants or products they must be together in the same place because it's obvious that they're going together if q is going down s also is going down so first thing first you must know q and s must be in the same place. Either they are both reactants or they are both products. Yeah? So now we know that after this change that was done here, this Q and S are both going down, but P and R are going up, meaning that P and R must be together as well. Because whatever is happening, you know, if remember the factors we've got concentration, we've got temperature and pressure. The previous question 1.5 was focusing on pressure and temperature. 
So now we're going to focus on concentration. So remember, if I'm having the direction A plus B, uh, then it says forming C plus D. Ne? If I increase the concentration of A, ne, we know that the uh, forward direction will be favored to oppose that change. We'll expect C and D to then what? Go up together at the same time. But A and B will go down at the same time. The graph is giving us a hint. Q and S are both going down at the same time, meaning there are either reactants or there are other products. So you come to your possible answers. Q and S must be on the same place. Either they are both reactants or they are both products. You can have a mixture of other letters. So you come and check. P and Q here are at the same place. Come and look at the, at the graph. P is going up. Q is going down. So P and Q are, are not at the same place. Because they are doing inverse. They both must do. If they are both increasing, they both must increase. If they are both decreasing, they both must decrease. So P and Q are not at the same place. We know that Q is decreasing. S is decreasing. R is increasing. P is also increasing. P and R must be the same place. Same as Q and S. Which is B. B is giving us that combination. Q and S are the same place. Also P and R. Because it's clear from the graph that Q and S are decreasing. And then while P and R are increasing based on the graph. Now. So without wasting time. I think that this map chase, they were trying to save you guys as much time as possible. Which is good for you guys, by the way. So number eight. The ionization of constant KW for pure water at 25 degrees is equal to... Wow. Okay, I didn't expect this type of question. Because it's like a question where the... If you know your accident basis, how those calculations can be done about um, OH and also neutral and stuff like that, then this becomes easy. Because we know already from what you know from incident base that kw is equals to 10 to the power negative uh 10 to the power negative 14 that's what the value of kw based on what you know about what so meaning this means uh the answer just becomes that answer which is one times 10 to the power yeah that's just about knowing your your thought about incident base wow okay that was quick to figure out but okay i know i'm worried about the next questions this one was just like I feel like this map choice was as easy as it can get. Okay, we'll have two more before we break a lot. 1.9 the electrode potential of AG AG electrode. So they're doing silver electrode, and then it, they are determined with the H and, and also hydrogen electrode. PT electrode was used as a reference. The half fraction which occurs at the anode of this half fraction is so remember. At anode, we get what? Uh, oxidation. No? So at anode, we get oxidation. Remember, the oxidation direction will always look like this. Because no? the one that you get on the table, for example, if you get Ag plus E, which you have on the table like that, uh, this one automatically will give us what we call a reduction direction, no? which will occur at the cathode. Anode will be opposite. For example, you can have Ag, and then it will form Ag plus and also E minus ne? this one will be plus yeah. This is the typical oxidation reaction, ne? which will be at anode. Ne? Then this will be a typical uh, cathode, which is the uh, reduction. Ne? So just be careful of such. So now you must ask yourself: They are testing Ag uh, with hydrogen. So now, meaning one between the two will be the anode, the other one will be the cathode. So let's go to the table quickly. I want to show you guys something. Okay, let's just take the table now. I want to go and find each AG. I want to find AG first. I'm just go straight and try to find. I'm just use the B one. Uh, I'm to use the B one. Something like it. Let's go and find AG. So that's AG there. That is our AG. It's 0, 0,8. AG is 0, 0,8 now. Let's go and find hydrogen. Hydrogen. Yeah, that's hydrogen there. It's zero. Okay. Ag is 0, 0,8 on the table, and then hydrogen we know it's zero, so this will become very really easy now. So we know that Ag is giving us 0, 0,8, so we end up getting 0, 0,8 from Ag, so Ag 0, 0,8 V, and then the hydrogen one is giving us zero. So remember when you're dealing with galvanic cell, when you're dealing with the galvanic cell, you use that. People, some people call it ANC method. The one which is having the highest E value is the cathode. Ne? 
the one that is having the lowest e value is the anode so here you can see the lowest e value is on hydrogen which means hydrogen will be our anode the highest e value will be cathode so we know remember in anode we undergo oxidation meaning our lovely hydrogen gas will be undergoing oxidation eh? because it's having a lower e value so the direction of oxidation remember it goes like this you have your metal or gas or whatever then it goes and have the e on the right so you can see we've got two abigan gas one, one which is having e on the right is number c eh? so that means uh, the answer will be lovely number c okay guys i don't want to lie this map choice was if you know your theory it was as straightforward as you can get which is why physical science map choice is always nice okay let's finish up now remember the previous question was governing cell now the next question will be uh the other cell which is the electrolytic cell so an electrochemical cell which is having two half cells is allowed to deliver current in a period which one of the following combinations best represent a change in concentration of the two electrolytes uh, per time so remember it's undergoing in a battery so now they're asking us there are two electrolytes in a time one thing you know for sure one will increase the other one will decrease ne? and then now look at the possible options i want to take out the ones which are going to be off this one chemical will be off because it's, it's just giving us a curve well other one must increase the other one must go down so this one is showing us who's going up who's going down because they look like a curve this one we have another one going down another one going up then they reach a certain point okay also you'll be out so now it leaves me with this one so we've got one that is going up okay the other one is going down from the same point eh? here they both start at the same time and another one just goes off sometime so these ones are going to be straight up from the same place which will be a because they are both sent from the same point other one is going up other one is going down because that's how the battery will look work work you're gonna have one in the cathode the other one in the uh, anode so they're gonna work in opposite so that's it this was 20 max wow this map choice was i feel like it was not i won't say it was easy but it just needed you to know your theory if you know your theory it was easy to cover now so let's quickly go to question number two now so number two is about organic chem so they're giving us uh a to f molecules so we know we've got a butane which we know is going to be a lovely alkene and then we're having this one will be an alcohol alcohol and then we have got c uh, aldehyde that will be aldehyde and then we continue now we're having the methyl group there's a methyl group there but there's also oh which means um it's bound to give us alcohol also you can have alcohol there's not two bonds and then again aldehyde the name is giving us aldehyde and then here we've got that co and then the c is inside that'll be a ketone yep. okay so i think i've filled all of them now which is good i always advise that you fill them first before you look at the questions now. It becomes so easy now to solve uh, what they request from you if you can solve the questions first eh? if you can fill the table first so first thing first definitions i'm not a fan of definitions because just go and memorize whatever the definition is <laughs> so the asking us about homologous series so for example we know we've got a lot of homologous series you can have your alkenes your alkanes your aldehydes your ketone those are all homologous series eh? so now the definition is what so we know the definition is what it's it's a series of organic compounds that can be described by the same general formula. So it's like a group of a group of uh, organic compounds, organic compounds, uh, which can be described by the same general formula. It can be described by same general formula the same general formula yeah. that would be your homologous series for example your alkenes your aldehydes your ketones they are all the same homologous series now. so let's quickly go to number two now because i feel like i'm out of space here so i'll see where i can put the other solutions at so now they're asking write down the structural formula for compound c now you go and look for c where are you c that is c so this one the structural formula of that Ooh. So let's look at C again. We see. Oh, that's C. It's having C O O O H. Wait, that will be. That will be. Uh, it won't be <laughs> aldehyde. It's going to be carboxylic acid. 
just that now that I'm gonna throw it carbolic acid. Yeah, because it does that two O there. I only saw one O yeah. To look after my eyes. So the structure formula will just be C. That's for number two. C and then you put that and then you go there, then you're gonna have your O and your OH. That'll be the carboxylic acid for number two. That'll be number C. So that is three max. Wow. Is it three max or two max? No, it's two max. Sure, yeah, because I was surprised why it's three max. It's two max. Sure, that's better. <laughs> yeah, two max makes sense. Okay. So they're asking us to now the name for D. Oh, we need to go and look for all the metal groups now. So the metal groups are going to be very important. The name for number D. So you look at number D. So you need to label it now. So I think the best thing you can do here is to find the longest carbon chain first. If I go this way straight, one, two, three, four, that will give me four carbons. But if I go this way, one, two, three, four, same, it's giving me four carbons. So the best thing I can do here, the aim is to have a longest carbon chain, which I can probably get from this now. So now I need to look at this. Um, if I start from here, one, two, three, four, that's four again. And then, but if I start from, I'm trying to see if the combination I can get. If I start from here, one, two, three, four, I'm adding four as well. Okay, so let's do this way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm having that longest carbon chain now. Yeah? So let's see now, if I'm in that longest carbon chain, because I'm trying to make my carbon with hydrogen be small as possible now. So if I'm going this way now, so this will be that, 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 and that. I can have four carbons now. Or is there any other way I can get five? No, you can't. Because this will be three. All of them will give you three carbons. But if I do a longest carbon chain, wait a minute. Uh -uh, wait, 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 wait. Now I see. But if I'm having this, this could be my longest carbon chain. Because if I go there now, I'm training other things, which will give us a problem with the other one. So yeah. So our longest carbon chain will be this three. One, two, three. Yeah, that'll be one, two, three. That'll be our longest carbon chain. One, two, three. So but I mean now, if remember I need to make sure that I prioritize my OH, which is this one. So carbon with OH will be number one. It's be the carbon with OH, which will be number one. So now I come back. The carbon with OH is this one. It's having a metal group here. So there's a metal group there and also a metal group. So the carbon with or it is having two metal groups, which means it will be one, comma one. Then you must remember before you put a name and a number, you must have a dash name. So it'll be one comma one di. Have two metals dimethyl, and then remember it's three carbons. Three carbons is prop, which means it will be it's an alcohol, so it'll be propanol. Now. One comma two di propanol. So it, propanol, not propanol. Now will be an aldehyde. So yeah, that will be that. Remember. Prioritize the carbon with the OH group, né? and then just see that it has got two methyl groups. That'll be your name. That is 3 max. Why are they giving 3 max? Sure, okay. Must be grateful. <laughs> okay, let's quickly go on, move along. 2.2.3 The homologous series for which compound F belongs. Remember, I've already filled them up. F is this one. F is a ketone. Yeah, because I already filled up F is a ketone. That's how many max? One. Okay. F is a ketone. So they want us to do the structural formula for compound E. E is an aldehyde. Remember, an aldehyde will have COO and then uh, we can have H. So the methyl group, the C that is having OH will have, uh, sorry, the C that is having O will have an H on the first carbon, right? So you must always make sure that for aldehyde, the C which is having H, either it's in the last or the first carbon. It's never in the middle. Then that will be in the middle will be ketone. If you're having one in the middle or number two, that's a ketone. But if it's at the end, that becomes an aldehyde. So to save yourself time, just write it like that. And then in case they, to ask for the functional group as well of an aldehyde, that will be the uh, formal group, for example. So they didn't ask here so far. I'm surprised why they're not asking us about the functional groups. Because they're supposed to ask about them as well. Okay, maybe they're going to ask some time later. Okay, let's move along. That will be one mark as well, yeah. So let's go to 2.3. For compound A, write down, uh, remember, so this is for number, this one, eh? yeah. For compound A, write down the general formula. Compound A, why you A? A is an alkane. In alkane, we know that the general formula, for if you know your theory again, just about memorizing it if you want to, it's 2, uh, and then uh, it's CN, it's CN, and the number is going to be H, 2N, 
and then a plus two example if you can have a if you were to have a, an ethane for example if we have an ethane here yeah. you see now an ethane will have now let's look at this how many carbons are having we have two carbons so it will be like c2 and then how many and then it will be h2 and then how many hydrogens it will be two times two dollar before plus this six hydrogens so it will be two n plus two to make it six hydrogens né? so to make it six hydrogens will be two n plus two but if there was to have a double bond there the answer just becomes cn h2n né? if you have a double bond but if you have a triple bond it becomes cn h2n minus two because you introduce the number of hydrogens but a normal alkane will have cn h2n and plus two so that you can have uh, as many hydrogens as you can then that would be that how many marks uh, general formula it's one mark okay so i guess i want you guys to know the general formulas just on that they differ from each double bonds will be cn h2n and then the triple bonds will be cn h2n minus two yeah? so let's finish up with this next question now the balance equation for the oxidation reaction so they want us to do an oxidation reaction so in other words we can do the combustion reaction for the same um that's what about the oxidation reaction who's the oxidation reaction now balance for the oxidation reaction so you need to ask yourself who's the oxidation reaction here yeah? because the first one is having that the second one's having that hmm. what's the oxidation reaction so they just want the balance equation for the oxidation reaction they're not specifying which one is the oxidation reaction now so i have to choose one which I'm going to use for the oxidation reaction. Because from what I know so far, oxidation reaction. Okay, a bit lost with this one now. So they want us to stick. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, now I see. They want us to talk about A. So the question is still number A. Okay. The question is still number A, which is good now. So the thing is still number A. So they're asking us to write the balance equation for when A will undergo combustion. Yeah? Number A is the butane. Butane means 4. Yeah? So it will be C4. H10, that's the butane molecular formula. So remember, during combustion, react with oxygen. Two products, remember, it's CO2 and water. Those are the two products you get during combustion. That's the first thing that you must do. True, they're going to give a mark for that. I'm not sure. But they, they want us to write the balance because it's three marks. Yeah. They want us to write the balance equation. So to balance it out, let's look at the left. I've got four carbons on the right, one carbon. So I'm going to put a four there. So it'll be four to make my carbons balance. So I've got four carbons and also four carbons. Yeah? Now let's go to oxygen. I'm having two oxygens here. Here, I'll have four times two. That will be eight plus one. Okay, that will balance my thing. Also, I'm looking for hydrogens. Yeah, okay, I lost the plot. It's 10 hydrogens here. Here, I'm going to have only two hydrogens. Remember, the aim is to have 10. So for me to have 10 hydrogens, I must be careful now. Because if I having uh, 10 this side, this means now I need to be a bit careful of how I'm going to do this. Because my aim is to have um, 10, 10. Okay, I'm having 10 this side. And then uh, here, oxygen, sorry, hydrogens, it's only 2. So let's just put a 5 down. 5, 5, that becomes 10. So it's that, then it becomes 10. Eh? Okay, I think it started. Yeah. So now the problem is oxygen now. Let's do our oxygens. I'm having two oxygens here. Four times two, that's eight. Eight plus five, that'll be thirteen. Yeah, I'm having thirteen oxygens. My carbons are fine. My hydrogens are fine. So now the problem now that I'm experiencing now is my, uh, what do you call it? My uh, oxygens, I'm having eight. And then I'm having uh, thirteen. So meaning here, yeah, I'm only having six. So to make sure that I'm balanced out, the best thing that you always do is to have 13 over 2 because yeah? if you have 13 over 2 that balance out the 13 so now that i'm having 13 over 2 that will balance out the 13 because 13 over 2 will be 6,5 6,5 times 2 that will give us 13 so i'm having 13 this side and also 13 this side but they always prefer you guys to leave it in a balanced way because right now it's a fraction they don't like fractions so to remove the fraction here you can multiply everything by 2 yeah? so the 2 here will multiply everything so meaning when I'm gonna apply here by two, so it will be C two from the balance thing is ten. And once you multiply everything by two, this two will go, meaning it will be thirteen remaining and O two. 
and then again you're going to multiply this by 2 which will become 8 co2 also this by 2 which becomes 10 h2o so you just have to multiply a year by 2 then the 2 and the 2 will cancel each other then everything else also you must multiply by 2 to solve your thing but before you do that just do them one by one to see what they're going to give you so that will be that so that will be a three max yeah should be a three max because it will be balanced now with the same carbon same hydrogens and same oxygen which will leave your answer as balanced as possible now okay now let's go to number four two point four compound b reacts with organic compound from the table to form an ester okay we're forming an ester now so remember if you're going to form an ester now you need two reactants you need to have an alcohol and also a carboxylic acid so now you must ask yourself who's the carboxylic acid who's the ester because for us to form an ester we need to have carboxylic acid and also uh what do you call it and an alcohol reacting now so what compound b compound b is this one with an alcohol meaning b must react with an uh, carboxylic acid who's carboxylic acid number c so b and c need to react to form an ester okay, let's look at the questions now first question 2.1 4 2.4.1 write down the letter of the organic that will react with b remember for us to form an ester alcohol and carboxylic acid must react so c is the carboxylic acid meaning c will be our answer b must react with c for us to form an ester so write, write down the name of the ester that forms remember the part from carboxylic acid will form the part, the first part. Now. So it comes with the carboxylic acid. I'm having how many carbons? Two carbons. Meaning we're forming something around earth. So I know that we're forming something around earth. So since it's two carbons for carboxylic acid. And from, for alcohol, we've got how many carbons for alcohol? One, two, also two. Again, for alcohol, we're forming earth. So for both of them, we're forming earth, which now it becomes easy because for us to form the name just need to go and combine so the alcohol part will be the first part no? so the alcohol part it's already at and then also the other part is at so it just becomes now easy for you to solve this because i know it will become ethyl will be the first part then the remaining part of carboxylic acid you just have to go there and join no ante to it so it becomes ethyl no ant so if alcohol was having four carbons for example if your alcohol was butane or butanol then it would have been butyl ethanoate. So the first part is from alcohol. Whatever your alcohol is, it becomes ethyl. Or if it was but, it would become butyl. If it was prop, it would propyl if that was the alcohol. Then the ester part, the carboxylic ester, the carboxylic part just forms the remaining part of a carboxylic acid. Name. So that would be the name. Okay, that would be 16 marks. Okay, so far, the exam was so nice. Because I've seen the maple trees and I've seen this one. So it means that it was doable for us to solve now. So now we need to go to number three, which will be about uh, intermolecular forces. So let's look at the table. The given us table which is having A, B, and C, and D. So since like they're investigating boiling point, so they're giving us different names here. So I'm having alkane, C, alkane, alkane, and alcohol. So there's a big chance they might be investigating. Um, Things that take us London for C is such as hydrogen bonds, but I'm not sure we'll see as we go through the question. The first thing they're asking us to define vapor pressure. Eh? So the pressure is the pressure, but this will be the pressure. It's the pressure uh, which is exerted, exerted by a vapor, eh? by a vapor. At, at equilibrium, yeah. At equilibrium, so that'll be the vapor pressure. So they're asking for the definition for two marks now. But you can find some in uh, what do you call it in study guides or textbook. But I think this would be along the same lines. So 3.2 which one of the f f of the compounds A or B has the highest pressure? So you need to ask yourself that like, question now. You must always know that, guys, you must always know. The higher the intermolecular forces, ne? the lower the vapor pressure. So now you must ask yourself a question. Between an alkane and alcohol, where is the highest intermolecular forces? You know that the forces, they get stronger when you go from London, then you go to dipole, then you go to hydrogen bonds. So alcohol, and I've got hydrogen bonds. Meaning they've got the strongest 
intermolecular forces. Ne? So the forces are stronger at alcohol, meaning alcohol has got the highest or the strongest intermolecular forces, meaning alcohol will have the lowest vapor pressure. So meaning D will have the lowest vapor pressure. And also, don't forget, the higher the boiling point, the lower the vapor pressure. So boiling point and vapor pressure, they are inverse to each other. The higher the boiling point, the lower the vapor pressure. Same thing. The lower the boiling point, the higher the vapor pressure. So coming to the table here, where's the lowest boiling point? It's A. So if A is the lowest boiling point, therefore, the pressure must be high. So the asking you between A and B, yeah, we can see that A is lower boiling point, B is higher boiling point, meaning A will have the lowest uh, lowest boiling point will be highest pressure. It's upside down. Now. So pressure and boiling point are inverse to each other, meaning the answer here will be A. A will have the highest pressure because it is having the lowest boiling point. So the asking us to focus on number C now. C is this one, which is a metal group. Now. So we consider C. Is C saturated or an remember and the normal have got either double bond or a triple bond eh? the one which are saturated it's mostly single bonds so now you ask yourself is this having a double bond or a triple bond or a single bond it's having a single bond because an alkane if you're having a single bond you have what we call a saturated one so c is saturated because it's only having C uh, bonds. But if it was having double bonds or triple bonds, then they become an saturated ones, which it can form, they can form oil or they can form anything along those lines now. So give a reason for your answer. Uh, <laughs> so remember, it is having, only having single bonds. Yeah, it's only having single bonds. So if it's having single bonds, it becomes a saturated single bond. Okay. So your typical alkene and alkyne will have uh, two or triple bonds. They become and sacred ones now to 3.3.3 rather which type of intermolecular forces are mainly present between uh, these molecules uh, or oh, the asking about c yeah so about c so c you look at c remember c is an alkane who's present in alkane London forces now so London forces are the ones which are in alkane like the way i did more alkane We've got London forces now. And then dipole dipole will be your aldehyde and your ketone. So dipole dipole is aldehyde and ketone. So your hydrogen bonds, you get alcohol, you'll get your carboxylic acid, and you'll get your ester. Those will be hydrogen bonds. In case tomorrow they will ask you, your alkane, your alkene, your alkyne, they are all under London forces now. Then ketone and aldehydes are under dipole dipole. Then uh, hydrogen bonds, you get your esters, your alcohols, and your carboxylic acid. Ne? So they're asking about C. C is an alkane, which means it will be London forces. 3.4, consider B and C. They are what you call structural isomers of each other. Ne? Which I think I explained this in my pictures. Remember, isomers will be um, the compounds which will have same molecular formula, but different process formula. Ne? So they have same Molecular formula. Then there's a question in my choice again. Same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Ne? Different structural structural formula. It's done. So they're asking us to refer to the structure, intermolecular forces, and energy in your expression to explain why B has a higher boiling point. Than C. So they're telling us that B has a higher boiling point than C. First of all, B and C are both alkanes. Ne? B and C. Uh, so let me just put it here. B and C are both alkanes. Ne? So now the difference, what's the difference between the two of them? C is having a metal group, meaning C is branched. Ne? If you have a metal group, it will be branched. So C is branched. And the strength, strength of intermolecular forces ne, is stronger, is stronger in a linear chain, in a linear chain. Ne. Therefore, it will be weaker in a branch molecule. C is branch, so C will have a weaker, 
intermolecular forces compared to the linear one because B is linear. So just don't forget, C is branched, B is linear. The strength of intermolecular forces are higher on a linear one. And remember, the higher the, the forces, the stronger the boiling point. So B is linear, it will have the highest boiling point because it will have the stronger forces compared to C. C is a branched one, but they are both alkanes. So they want to compare them based on being linear or branched because they are all alkanes. But if you're comparing alkane with the dipole or alkane bond, then alkane will always be the weaker one. The reason why here it's B is higher than C is because B is linear. And then C is, uh, what do you call it, branched. The more branched you are, the lesser uh, the strength of the forces and therefore the boiling point will be lower. Okay, that will be for 3.4.2. Let's do 3.5 now. So explain the difference in boiling points of B and D. Again, B and D. So they're asking about B and D. You come and check. B is an alkane. D is an alcohol. This way is going to come back again now. Remember, the strength of the forces gets stronger as you go from London to Abigail Bond. B, so in your answer, just B is an alkane. And we know that D is an alcohol. So we know alkanes have what we call London forces. Ne? D is an alcohol. Alcohol have what we call hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds, don't forget me. Hydrogen bonds have strongest intermolecular forces. Ne? Therefore, they will have higher boiling point. Ne? So therefore, they will have higher boiling point. Therefore, they will have a higher boiling point. So London forces, they've got the weaker intermolecular forces compared to hydrogens. That's why London forces will have a lower boiling point. That's why B is having a lower boiling point than D. D is an alcohol which is having hydrogen bonds. Don't forget, hydrogen bonds, higher forces compared to London forces. That's why now the boiling points are going to differ. That will be your answer. You need to explain about uh, B being an alkane and also D being an uh, alcohol. Alkane, you have got those London forces. Alcohol, you have got your abigail bonds. And remember, the stronger the forces, therefore more energy will be required. Ne? More energy is required to break bonds. Ne? So you must also put the energy part in your answer to break bonds. That will be the intermolecular forces and how they work each. So the whole question was 15 max. That's 16, that's 31. So that's like already around 51 max. Yeah. That's lovely. So now let's continue to question number four, which will be um a lovely question about um reactions. So with reactions, mostly the most common ones that they always ask, either addition, substitution, uh, elimination, or they can have cracking. So they focus on those reactions now. So now you need to ask yourself now, there's heat there, there's an OH there, then I'm having HBR. Okay, the one that I always advise you to target on, take it the ones which are having double bonds, because the one that is having a double bond will always be an addition reaction, meaning something will be added to that double bond. For example, here I'm having but one in, which means there's a double bond here. Somewhere there's a double bond, somewhere. HBR will be added to the double bond here. Yeah. Because there's a double bond somewhere, meaning HPR will be added to the double bond. And then uh, here again, an alcohol will be added to the double bond also here. So this reaction number one will be an addition reaction. Same thing as this number three, that will be an addition reaction. Here, from there to there is a substitution reaction, which they told us. There's, maybe there's a reason for that, which might be good for us, we'll see. So the first question, 4.1, using the special formulas, I done the balance equation for number one okay number one you must ask yourself is this one so going from c that's number one there it's c and the c and then a c and it's an h there an h there and then there's a c and an h which means there'll be a double bond there and then there's gonna be c one two it's c and there's one two so it's C, one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, and can, the double bond will be here. Yeah, the double bond will be there. To have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. The double bond is there. To have one, two, three, four, three, four. Here it's one, two, three, four. 
which is fine. So our double bond is showing uh, at this part here. Yeah, that's why we're having our double bond. Sorry, I thought I was showing it. So our double bond will be here. So now we need to go and look at the reaction. Remember, we're going to add SBR to the double bond. Now. So this will be the written part. And then this will be added with HBr. Then the product now, wherever you see the double bond, you're going to fill Br and also H. Now. So just everything else will come back as it is now. This will come back as it is. I'm going to go straight to the double bond to show you how it's going to work. That will be that. And then uh, Br will come here. Now. Then hydrogen will go to the one which is having carbon, which is having more hydrogens, which will be this one. Yeah, that is due to, uh, uh, what do you call that guy? Uh, not my quick prof, the other one. So it's off, yeah, so it's off. So as again, we'll go to the carbon, which is having more uh, hydrogens. Then the BR will go to the other one due to, so it's off. But remember, we're just adding uh, the carbons in this one. Just come and add the SPR. If you're having a double bond, whatever they're doing as a reactant, just go and add it. Same thing here, in alcohol, OH will need to be added to the double bond, which is there. That will be a reaction. And how many marks? Four. Wow. So they bring a four marks for that. Maybe they're going to give a mark for this, for you to write it down. There may be three marks for this. I'm not sure, but four marks. What a lot of marks to get. So they're asking, write down the type of reaction uh, that occurs when bit one in is formed to X. Remember, whenever you're adding to a double bond, that reaction is what we call addition. Whenever you're adding to a double bond, it's an addition reaction. Okay, write down total formula and I pick name for secondary alcohol. So now just come and check how many carbons are we having here? One, two, three, four. We're having four carbons. So the guess setting OH to the four carbons. Only four carbons, we know it's a beauty, name, but it's having an OH, so it just becomes uh remember it's a second secondary carbon, meaning the OH will be in carbon number two. So it just become bit. I just have be 10 to all, ne? yeah. Or some people they prefer to have the name first, or you can have it as two dash be 10 now. But remember, it's four carbons, so it's just adding OH to the four carbons. So that would be wait, three max for that. Or oh, this one mark somewhere. So addition is one mark, write down the structural formula, or oh, down the structural formula as well, not just the name. So you need to go and show the structural formula. So the name will be one mark. So the soil formula will be everything as it is now. So you just have to go and do four carbons. Four carbons. And then carbon number two is having OH now. So carbon number two will have OH. And then carbon number three will just have H and H. Then the last one will just have H, H, and also H. So that will be your social formula. The name and that one will give us three marks. Nice. 4.4. Name the type of social reaction that occurs when X is being uh, converted to secondary alcohol number two. So now you're having a reaction. Eh? We're knowing you're going from whatever X is, which is X. That's our X there. So we're going from this one now to Y. So remember, the one that will require the removal of this, uh, which will be substitution reaction, give the first one, which will be the hydrolysis. Eh? So that will be the, the first one. That will be the hydrolysis. That will be the name of the first substitution reaction, which is hydrolysis. So you end up removing uh, compounds inside there. So, okay, I just quickly want to finish up quickly now. Pretend one in can be converted directly to cellular alcohol without the formation of X with the help of a catalyst. Now. And then uh, 4.5.1, except pretend one in, write down the name of the reactant we did for this one. Okay, whenever you're adding there, remember to get an alcohol, we need to have OH. How do I get OH from? Water. Because water will be like this. This is how you can write water, OH. So the water will come, OH will come from water. So the reaction that can be used is water. Because water will give us the OH which we need to form the alcohol. Ne? So 4.5.2, write down the formula of the catalyst uh, which can be used. So the molecule used the most common catalyst which is also used for S star is H2SO4. This is always my go to guy. <laughs> Whenever I'm stuck, I'm like, oh, which catalyst to use H2SO4? It's the most common used uh, catalyst for this type of reactions. Ne? So name the type of reaction that will okay uh, direct yeah directly one remember for us to go from there to there something must be removed and for us to remove and uh, to form uh, to remove something double bonds will form and if we're gonna remove something 
Remember, it is in you end, substitution you shape them. But if you are removing something, that becomes elimination. Something has been removed, it becomes elimination. So, tomorrow they can ask about elimination, or they can ask about substitution or addition. So here they ask about all of them, which was good to see. Okay, I'm not done yet. I don't know why I'm saying they were asking about all of them. Because they could still ask about other ones. Interesting. So far, the, I think so far they ask us about combustion. They ask us about addition. Now it, it just did substitution and also uh, elimination. So 4.6, I think the last question of, of this year. Yeah, last question of this part. So instead of using water as a reactant in reaction number two, yeah, the one about concentrated sodium hydroxide is being used when the mixture is being heated. So now they're using what we call a concentrated uh, hydroxide. So they're using what we call concentrated uh, hydroxide. So I'm just going to go back and check something here. In the type of reaction that okay during this direct. So wait, they're not going direct. I think it was not looking at that question now. Next question is elimination, and I'm looking at this now. They're looking for the type of reaction that will occur. So remember that going direct from X to this. And X uh, X is like this compound. So which reaction will give us OH? Remember, there must be removal of water. Okay, wait, the one that will remove OH is hydr yeah, hydration, because hydration will remove it. That will be hydration. Yeah, I think the question... Because now that the next question is asking about elimination, I'm like, why did I say elimination before? Because now the question is asking us about elimination. Because now I'm going to be using, remember, either use the dilute or the concentrated sodium. Ne? So here they're using the concentrated sodium one in this section. So now they're asking for the IUPAC name of compound W. So let's go and look for compound W. Oh, W, that's, that's W. So we're going from this to W. So remember, how many carbons? One, two, three, four. We have four carbons. Né? And if you're using NOH, that will uh, lead uh, to formation of a double bond. So we're going to form a double bond here. But four carbons will remain. So a double bond will be formed. And OH will also be there as well. Because OH will come from this part. Né? So we're going to form four carbons here. So if you're forming four carbons, let's remember, we're forming a double bond. Which will be in, but it's four carbons. So it will be built. Uh, two in because it'll be in number number two, ne? so that'll be your one mark. And then uh, name the type of friction that occurs. Remember, we are removing something that becomes elimination, ne? which I didn't get the last question. I don't know why I jumped the jump, the jump the gun before. So that'll be removing. If I remove something, it becomes elimination. There was still in hydration, so hydration is the one you add OH to form uh, alcohol. Ne? So that was organic, I think. Yeah, I think we're done with organic now. Because number five, mostly it's rate of friction. So now we're going to rate of friction. So now we're going to rate of friction. Just get the light sorted. Because the thing is going down now. Okay, lightning is fine now. So now let's just look at this now. So they're talking about collision theory. So we're at rate of friction now. So meaning, if we're doing rate of friction, lightning is doing a problem. So if we're doing rate of friction now, you know, they're going to ask about the factors, uh, they're going to ask about collision theory, maybe the calculations to find the um, rate of friction itself. So we don't need to look at the question now. They're asking us uh, about collision theory. So they say that the collision theory can be used to explain how different factors affect the rate of friction. So they're saying name two conditions that determine whether collision, uh, whether a collision between two molecules will lead. Okay, remember that different ways that things must be there in for us to have proper collision theory. And again, if maybe you didn't see the part, there's a part about collision theory in our playlist. Né? So I think you can go to the playlist and you will see the part about collision theory. So in, the molecules must be properly oriented. oriented. There must be a good orientation. Né? <clears throat> the molecules must be in the very good orientation. Né? Also, you must have enough kinetic energy. Let's also have enough kinetic energy. So you must also have enough kinetic energy. So the molecules must be in a good orientation and also uh, enough kinetic energy for us to have a collision theory. That will be the two points that they're asking for. Then 5.1.2. 
In terms of quantum theory, explain why the rate of chemical reaction increases with temperature. So always remember, at a higher temperature, molecules the molecules will have enough kinetic energy. I'm gonna call it EK. So at high temperature, the molecules will have enough kinetic energy. And if the molecules are having enough kinetic energy, there will be effective collisions. Ne? And again, you can go to the playlist. Ne? I had time to explain these factors one by one. Ne? So there will be effective collisions. So it's like this. At high temperature, the molecules will have effective or efficient kinetic energy. Ne? Then once you've got enough kinetic energy, there will be more effective collisions. That will be your point for two marks. Ne? So let's go to the Boltzmann curve now. So remember, the P is there. So you need to ask yourself a question. The P will be there. There will also be the action of molecules. So the EP here will only represent the EK. Ne? And then the two of them. This QR, the three of them, sorry. You've got QR and also S. So you see that S is below here a bit. Then it goes there and continue. Q is going there. All that. So we need to look at how the questions are going to uh, ask themselves here. So now they're asking you 5.2.1 name of energy by P. P is EK, which is kinetic energy. No? So don't always remember EP is kinetic energy, or that part there is kinetic energy. Which is the EK. No? So I prefer to write it as EK. That's the kinetic energy. No? So rather than the change in the conditions which result in curve Q. So curve Q, now you need to ask yourself, that's Q there. And then remember, whenever you increase temperature, the graph will start from below. Ne? So I advise start with S. Whenever there's an increase in temperature, the graph will start from the below. So S, I know, there's an increase in temperature in number S. Increase temperature in number S. Because whenever you increase temperature, the graph will start from below. So S is an increased temperature. So now, they're asking about Q. Q is that part then. So you need to ask yourself now that what's happening to number Q. Here is temperature. Remember, the factors would be concentration temperature and also your sufficient molecules so meaning that if temperature is what as q will just be uh, concentration so you can have an increase in concentration in number s concentration increase now so this will be one more question yeah remember don't forget if the graph is starting from below they've increased the temperature now. tomorrow they can ask you to compare r and s together so meaning s will have higher temperature then R. Same thing, S will have higher temperature than Q. Because starting from the below. So let's quickly move to other questions of rate of friction. 5.3 now. They're giving us a paragraph which they're saying H T is the reaction between magnesium uh, reborn MGS and nitric acid to investigate one of the factors, that are investigating one of the factors of rate of friction. And they give us a balance a equation. So the question is asking us now. Write an investigative question. So your question can be whatever you feel like you can get from this question. So they're asking you to write a question that you think will apply to the experiment. So what type of question can you think of? So remember, we're investigating one factor to see a uh, direction rate. So what factor are we investigating here? So I see this magnesium uh, there. And then there's also nitric acid, which is being used. So they're investigating something here. What are they investigating? If they use nitric acid, nitric acid is an acid. So whenever you're using an acid, therefore you're more likely to be investigating concentration because it's an acid being used. So definitely now, what will the the question? Because they're ask, asking us to have the question. So the question, uh, just something about the concentration. Let's say, well, the concentration. Increase the rate of friction. That's my question. Because they're just asking us for the question. Rate of friction. So remember, it must be a question mark. Wait, rate of friction. That's for 3 max. No, it can't be 3 max. That's a question for 3 max. Let me just give it 1 mark or 2 max. 3 max. Because it's a question that I can ask about this. Which can be anything. It's a question. But 3. Sure. Okay. I don't know how they're going to mark the 3 max. But that will be the question. Based on what I'm seeing that they're investigating. Wow. Okay, now they said that there's a dilute nitric acid. They're giving us a graph. So here we're having one. There's 0, 8. There's 30 seconds there. So, okay, something will be happening which will come in hand. We'll do the questions. 
So they're asking which compound Ng or AH and not Ray is in excess and give a reason for your answer using the graph name. So the graph here is for magnesium. Okay. That's the amount of magnesium. So at 30 seconds, we were at uh, 0 0.8. At the beginning, we're having 1. So at the beginning, we're having 1. Then at 0 0.8, yeah, at 30 seconds, we're having 0 0.8. It's going down and going down and going down. So they're asking between MG and H03, which one will be in excess? Remember, MG is being used up, meaning it's going to end up being finished, meaning the other one will remain. So meaning HNO3 must remain because it's clear that MG is being used up. So HNO3 will remain because MG is going down. The arrow just to go down. MG is being used up in the graph, as you can see. This is the graph for MG, and it's going down. Meaning that the other one will remain just NH3. So that's two marks. Okay, I think the mark will be for choosing between the two. The reason will be MG is being used up now. 5.3.3 calculate the average kinetic rate of oh, sorry, calculate the average reaction rate during the first 30 seconds. Okay. So now first thing first, we're given an amount in grams that should come in handy. I figure this one out now. They gave us that in rand. So they're asking for the rate of reaction. Yeah, it's five max. Hmm. What can I think of? Because remember, uh, it's a mass. So rate of reaction will be change in mass of a change of the other one. Okay, wait a minute. I'm having mass there and also another mass there, which is what you're given at the beginning, and also what you're given at the end. Yeah? Okay, now what? That's mass and also mass there. So then the question, wait, that's an amount in grams, which is not. Is that number of mass or in moles? That's in moles. Yeah, because if it's in mass, they won't give us mass. Then the answer will be five marks. Well, yeah, it's an amount. Amount will be in moles. Now. So meaning that I need to go and find the number of moles for each. And then it's magnesium. Magnesium. The molar, molar mass of magnesium is 24 ne? on the page table. Yes, 24. Just go and confirm. <laughs> but the molar mass I know is 24. Let's go to the page table to confirm. Molar mass for magnesium. Magnesium, where are you? Mg number 12. Number 12, number 12. Yeah, that's 24. Yes, yeah, 24. My memory is still saving me. Well. My memory is still saving as well. So it's going to be Mg. It's... Magnesium is Mg24 G per mole. Ne? G per mole minus one. That's your Mg there. So let's find uh the mass for each. Remember, we're having mole of one at the beginning and the other one of 0 0.8. Let's just find them one by one. And then if I'm having the formula to find mass will be M of a molar mass. Ne? So the first one is the one one. Ne? So the moles will be one, then M to 24. Ne? So if I do cross publication. M will be 24 because I'm going to do cost multiplication here. M is 24 um, grams. Then the second one is for 0 0.8. So it will be N over M over smaller time M. Again, here it's 0 0.8 is equal to M over the bigger M. And then bigger M is 24. 24. Then 24 times 0 0.8. Let me just calculate. 24 times 0 0.8. 24 times 0 0.8. For example, 0.8. Okay. So mass will be 19,2. So that will be the other mass. So the initial moles was 1. Then we go to 0, 0,8. So therefore the initial mass would be 1 there. Second one would be uh, 0, 0,8. Remember the aim is to find rate of friction. So rate of friction, we know it's a change. So it will be change in mass of a change in time. Ne? So what is our change in mass? It will be the mass, which will be the other one, minus the other one. So it will be mass, which will be final. Minus mass should be initial. What is our final mass? Is 19,2. Initial mass is 24. It'll be 19,2 minus 24 over. What is our final time? Remember they're asking for 30 seconds. 30 seconds minus initial was zero. Ne? So basically our answer will be 19,2 uh, minus 24. Let's just figure that out. 19,2 minus 24. Okay, and then divide by that. So you just go straight, divide by that. Just divide that one by that. 
Let's do the four divided by that uh, one by eight. Okay, it's giving us negative zero comma six. Okay, it will be g plus I guess, yeah. But then yeah, it's a fraction which can be either be zero comma six. Just leave it as a positive answer. Yeah. So that will be that for that question. I think that's not hectic. But the aim is just to focus this being a mole. This will be the initial, then the final one. Since the graph is going down, time we know is going to be uh, that one minus that one, which is just easier. Let me also wait. If this is mole, let me also try to figure out if I can do change in mole. To change in mole, for example, the it will be final. Uh, or I can just have them changes. Yeah, but no, it's a totally waste of time. This one, I think, will be fine. Yeah, so it's giving me 0.16, I hope. Okay. Let's finish up. Copy on your notebook on the same uh, set of axes. Use a dotted line to show the curve that will be obtained when concentrated acid was used. So now they're asking us what will happen if we're using concentrated acid. I think I'm going to put it somewhere there. Let's start out the lightning first. I think I'm going to put it somewhere there. Because I want to show what will happen if we're using the concentrated acid. Will the graph go up or go down? That's a good question that you must ask yourself now. So remember they're using HNO3. Which is strong, so I know that first of all the graph will come around there. So far, we're having this one, which is from here going down, that's one there, and then we have 0 0.8 somewhere there. There's a second down there, that's the first part we're having. So now, now the next one, now you must ask yourself, you're using a concentrated acid. So if you're using a concentrated acid, therefore it will be weaker than the previous one, yeah. So it's gonna be should be going down. Yeah, it should be going down until wherever it reaches. Until it's all used up. So this will be the second one. I think the same as be a dot. Yeah, that'll be just how it will look. But it will go down compared to the previous one. This is the normal one. Just put it as original. So that one will go down in that way or in that manner. So that'll be 19 max. Wow. This was nice to see. So now we go to question number six. Uh okay, which is chemical equilibrium. That's your case here. Yeah, okay. They're giving us a graph showing something about casing and temperature. Okay. So they're giving us erection N2, O4, N2, NO2. So you must ask yourself a question now. As the temperature, if the temperature is going this way, KC seems like it's going up as well. That might be a hint. So the first question they're asking us. Write down the effect of increasing temperature as on N2. Remember, if we do math, I can have 5, 10, 15, and 20 here as my x values. So it is obvious from here, when we go this side, the thing is increasing here until it reaches equilibrium. So as the x values are increasing, so is the Kc is increasing. Meaning, remember, Kc is what? Kc is product of a reactant now. Is part of a reactant, meaning we know mathematically if product is high, therefore also the answer will be high, meaning that the products are increasing here, meaning NO2 is being favored. The more you favor the product, the KC also increases now. So meaning here, uh, as temperature is increased, also uh, KC is also increasing. And then how do I increase, uh, how do I favor the forward? Meaning that if I'm increasing temperature here, uh, therefore, uh, KC is also increasing. So the question was asking us rather than the effect of increasing temperature on it on yeah as we increase as we increase uh temperature also NO2 is increasing based on what the graph is showing us now. Okay. So which one of the of the reaction was favored due to an increased temperature? Of course, if KC is increasing, therefore product is being favored and product is the forward. So therefore forward will be favored. Forward is favored since we are increasing NO2, which is already uh, part of the forward direction. So they're just asking us to explain the principle. Okay, I'm going to just explain the principle to you guys now. So if you're having a closed system, if you're having a closed system, whenever there's a disturbance in the equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift to the other direction to oppose the change. That will be the principle. And then if you want, you can use the textbook as well. Because I want to go straight to the questions. Is the forward direction exothermic or endothermic? Remember the factors which we did in Mapuche's name. If you increase temperature, 
endo is favored. Ne? Don't forget that. And then for this instant, we know that the forward direction is being favored. And if forward direction is being favored, ne? so we know that the forward direction is being favored by something. How do I favor the forward direction? If I increase temperature, endo will be favored. So if I'm favoring the forward direction here, mean the forward direction must be what? Endothermic direction. So the forward direction must be endo because it's being favored. And if I increase temperature, endo will be favored. No? So because the temperature is being increased here from 5 to 10 and whatever, temperature is being increased and then the forward is favored. Mean that if I increase temperature, forward will be favored. Meaning here, since NO2 is being favored, therefore NO2 must be, which is a forward, we know that it's a forward one. And then we know based on the factors, increased temperature favors the endothermic reaction, meaning that the forward reaction must be endothermic. The reason is because if increased temperature, endo is favored. And here we can see that the forward is being favored, meaning that the forward must be endothermic reaction based on temperature as a factor. So they're asking right down the two changes that can be introduced to decrease the forward reaction. Remember, to decrease the forward reaction, Opposite must be done. I can decrease temperature. Because if I decrease temperature, exo will be favored. Exo will be the reverse one in this instance. Right? So I can decrease temperature. I can decrease temperature. Sharp. And then the number of moles. Let's look for the number of moles. Remember, in the reverse, we've got one mole. Forward, we've got two moles. Remember, increase in moles. So sorry, sorry, increase in pressure favors one which is having fewer moles. Fewer moles are on the reverse. So if I increase pressure, therefore the reverse will be favored. Because the aim is to not favor NO2. So if I increase pressure, the less moles will be favored, which will be the reverse one. Eh? So the other thing I can do more is to increase pressure based on the factors. Eh? Increase pressure. So those will be the two things we can do to solve our problem. Okay, the same one mole of SO2 and X mole they were initially placed in an empty 2DM container and sealed at temperature. At each equilibrium, 6 mole was present. If the value of the equilibrium at temperature is 6, calculate x. So they're saying the value of equilibrium is 6, calculate x. So basically, they're asking us to find x. So I'm trying to find where I can do this. Okay, I'm going to put my graph. I'm going to do this table. Now. At least I want to see the values that are also there. Okay, so first of all, the table. I can have my two things, which is N two O four. The other one is uh, two N O two. No, sorry, I thought I was focusing on the screen. Okay. Remember, we're going to have um initial mole, ne? and then uh, we're going to have. Yeah, oh, sorry. Oh. I'll look messy now. I want to put it in the same place with this one. Then we're going to have change here. And then we're going to have mole at equilibrium. And then we're going to have concentration at equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yeah? Sharp. I think that is sorted. So now remember the ratios. We know that it's the 1 is to 2. Yeah? The ratios is 1 is to 2 based on the balance equation. So the ratios is 1 to 2. Just sort out the line thing again. The ratios is 1 to 2 based on uh, the balance equation. So that would be the ratio. Wait a minute. What am I writing here? Wait. <laughs> yeah, I see my mistake. The question is no longer, is no longer focusing on NO2. And I'm still stuck in, in, at NO2. I don't even know why. The direction they're talking about SO2 now and O2 which are being sealed in a container. So now you must ask yourself, so they're having SO2. Sometimes you must pay attention, guys. SO2 and O2, and they're being sealed in a container. So remember, this always forms SO3. No? That will be SO3 that will be formed. They always form SO3. So that will be our reaction. Is it balanced though? I'm having one, so, okay, two oxygens, two, that's four oxygens. Yeah, I'm having how many oxygens? Three. Okay, just put two here. Yeah? I have six oxygens here. Here I've, I'm having two, four. That means, okay, sulfur now is two here. So I must just put sulfur two. So that will give me two sulfurs, two sulfurs, oxygens here, 
I have 4 plus 2, that's 6, 6, 6. Okay, that's a balanced one now, which is good for us. So let's just go and do the table now, like the way I did before. Now. So the ratios, based on the balance equation, I'm having 2 here, I'm having 1 there, I'm having 2. Those will be my ratios now. Here, I'm going to have initial moles now. Initial moles. Initial moles. And then I'm going to have change. And then I'm going to have moles at equilibrium. And then I'm going to have concentration at equilibrium. So I think I filled all the details which will be required here. So now I need to go and fill uh, the values as they give us. So we'll go back to the paragraph and just read. One mole SO2 and X mole of O2. They are placed in a 2 dm. So first of all, you know that concentration is N over V. No? V, we already know, to so save ourselves time. You know that we are dividing by 2. We are dividing by 2. That's our... Yeah. Yo, I, didn't have sp I didn't put space for the other one. Sure. Why am I making a mess? Since I must have made space for SO2, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to squeeze it around here, guys. I'm so sorry for this, guys. I'm going to squeeze space for SO2 around here. Because I didn't include it. So I'm going to squeeze it around here, the values. Because I need to put the values for each. Sure. Okay. Why am I making a mess now? It's just barely one out of 30 minutes and I'm already making a mess. So, okay. Initially, we had one SO2. So I come here at SO2. That initially we're given uh, one SO2. And then uh, O2, they're saying it's an X. So we can put an X there. And then the uh, uh, other one is SO3. They didn't say anything about SO3, which I think you must check it. So whenever they don't say anything about something, just put a lovely, uh, what do you call it? A lovely uh, zero, because they didn't say anything about it. So that will save you time. And then now, if you intend on getting some marks, then you can go and look for other information. So, so far at equilibrium, there are six mole of SO3. So you go to equilibrium, that's at equilibrium, the six mole, which is six there. And remember, everything that is under product, you put a two there. You put a two there. So that will be that. So now, remember now, we need to go and solve. The aim is to solve for any letter that they're asking us to solve now. So now you must ask yourself now, okay, initially how many of SO2? You can say we had one of SO2 initially. And then oxygen, uh, they said X. Let's put X there. And then uh, here, returns are negative and also negative now. So now, must ask yourself a question now. Um, here you have six. So to target some max, you can just come and put a six here. That will give you three. So this one is done this side. So now the problem is now, if you're having zero and a six, meaning something must be done, a number must be present here. So now the question is, what number can you put here? Because if I, I put a, a 6 now, that will become a bit of a problem. Because I'm trying to look at other ratios and see how we can solve them. Now. But if there's initial there, that's an X now. So I need to find a change. A change would come from 1. But if I find 1, that will give me the other change. Which will just try and see what it will give us now. So now, if I put a 6 here, because it will be 0 plus 6, that will be 6 now. So now we're trying to find other, other changes. So we know that 2 SO2 is giving us, um, we don't know the value, so just put it as a Y and the letter. But we know that 2 SO3 is giving us a 6 now. So if that's giving us a 6 now, that means that I can just go and simplify this now in that way. So this means that this 2 now, that's that, the ratio is the same. So whatever the value is, that I'm getting here will be the same as the other value. Right? So now, if I'm having a 3 here, because if I get a 6 there, that might be a bit of a challenge. But it's fine. Let's have it as a 6x. Let's put it as a 6x there. Right? And then if I'm having 6x here, yeah, this will be minus 6x there. Right? And then uh, here is also going to be, uh, can be, let's just do the ratio for this one. So the ratio here will be 2 SO3. That's forming 6. And then 1 or 2. So the ratio will be divided by 2. It will be 3. So we can have 3x here. Yeah. Sharp. That will be 3x. But I can't have 3 and 6. Because that's going to give me a problem. Remember the aim is to find x. If I want to solve for x. If I'm having 6x. No, okay. The best thing that I'm going to do now. I'm going to let 
this thing be x né? x will be our, our change né? x be our change so I'm gonna let x be our change né? so meaning here it's not as maybe negative and positive but so far I've seen that SO2 and SO2 they go together they have the same ratio but this one is a half of the other one so if I'm having x as a change therefore I can have minus x then but these two are double so meaning this one must be 2x because they're double of the x also this one must be 2x but the difference will be the sign it will be negative negative but the sign will be double né? because I want to solve for x if I do the minus 6 they might give me a problem so that will be that now so meaning and to go and just uh, simplify and see but if I'm having an x here I can't have the same letter just use my name because I left my name I'm gonna put it as k k is my initial <laughs> so I'm gonna have k is my initial né? so meaning and now we need to look at uh, most at equilibrium do we have anything that we can ask us to find the moles at equilibrium for this one um do i have anything that can help us with the moles at equilibrium so far we are getting nothing that can help us this one we know it's six which i think we have simplified which was fine and then this one what are we having as our number of moles let's go back to the paragraph again because i want us to find the initial uh initial o2 ne? trying to find out the other one that can give us that one okay so therefore this will be uh, at equilibrium here we're going to have k um, minus x né? and then here you're going to have 1 minus 2x né? that'll be 1 minus 2x because I can't do anything and then now it's going to give me a problem now if that's the case because if I'm having that 0 plus that that should be that yeah because that you give me a bit of a challenge now because if you're having that as that and then that means the other one must not allow you to do that okay I think I'm just gonna go back to the normal one I did at the beginning. So I'm gonna cancel that one. I'm gonna go back now and have two SO2 now. and then I'm just gonna do it with the normal numbers and see what it will give me because now that other one is giving me a problem. I'm trying to make X. So I'm gonna have that. So I'm gonna have initial here. Yeah? N initial now. Yeah? N initial. So I'm going to have change N equilibrium. And then C equilibrium sharp. So I'm gonna do it this way now. Let's just go and fill the normal. So initial they gave us one mole. It was placed in empty 2dm. At equilibrium six was found of SO3. Okay, sharp. So initial they gave us one of that. O2 is X. This one we don't know, we just put a zero now. So now we're just going to go there and then there will be a change. So remember, we can't find a change if you don't get the other ones. So now we must come here and check at equilibrium. They said that we have 6. So meaning here it must be plus 6 minus something there, minus something there. So the ratios we know, if it's 6 there, it's going to be 6 as well there. And here it will be 3. So you're going to have x minus 3 going there. You're going to have 1 minus 6 going there. And then everything will be divided by two. Just gonna do the with numbers and see what will take where it will take us now. So this will be minus five. That will be x minus three. That will be um six. So we know that c is number six cos n over v now. So this will be three there. And then uh, so I think yeah, I feel everything now. So let's go into the KC expression. So the KC expression now my things start to become blurry. The KC expression will be remember it will be product over rectangle. Right? Our product is SO3. So the rectangle will be SO2 plus O2 forming SO3. Right? So that will be our reaction. So that will be our product. But its balance will be two. We're going to balance it out. And also to the eh, not to the to the. So it's fine. So now let's just do the expression. So it will be SO3. It's a two squared. And then the rectangle will be SO2 also squared times O2 ne? the in squares. I think you get a mark for that as well. Which is one thing you must target. Then you go back to the question again. They told us that the KC was 9. So 9 KC was 9. And then SO3. What did we find as SO3? Yeah, we found 3 there. SO3, the end value was 3. 3 squared. Over what is our SO2? SO2 it's gonna be negative 5 over 2 squared also and then uh, 
times the concentration of O2, which is x minus 3 over 2. Ne? Sharp. So now we know we can just simplify everything as it is. Ne? So when you simplify everything as it is, it's going to be this will be 2,5 times 2,5. So be 2,5 times 2,5. Ne? It'll be uh, 6,5, 7, 7,5. 7,5. Yeah, 7,5. So we're going to have 9 there. And then 3 squared is 9. And then that's going to be 2,5 times 2,5. Same number twice. So that'll give us 5. And then uh, times x minus 3 over 2. Ne? So now I just need to simplify this now. You know that this whole thing can just multiply itself. Just going to put it somewhere there. Ne? So 9 will still be there. And then it will be 5 times that, which will be 5x uh, minus 15 over 2. Ne? And then 2 and 2 can cross multiply, cross multiply. This will be 18. 5x minus 15, so it will be 18 uh, plus 15, 5x, so it will be around 15 plus 18 plus that, 33, 5x, ne? so I'm going to divide both sides by 5 and 5, so my x will be around uh, 30, around 6, something, 6, 1, yes, around 6, 1 mole, if I did this one right, so I think around 6, 1. Two moles there, so that will be our typical x that we can get, unless something I'm missing. That will be how we'll solve this question. Yeah, based on everything that I know and the ratios as well. Yeah, I hope that will be the correct way. And then something went off there, so that will be how I'll approach the question to so solve for x. Now, sharp. That's six marks. Okay. The good thing that we'll be getting marks for expressions and also other things in between, which will help us to do a lot. So let's quickly go to number seven, which is accident base. So first thing first, so sometimes like every section that you've been doing so far, it's involving uh, having a, what do you call them, definitions. Eh? So they're asking about lorry, uh, prostat and lorry, acid about lorry and prostate. Eh? Remember, acid will donate H+. plus. Eh? So in other words, acid is a proton donor. Because you know that a base will be proton acceptor. Eh? And then a weak acid. So asking us to differentiate between weak acid and a dilute acid. Hmm. Okay. So always remember, a weak acid will always sort of like uh, it can't complicate the ions. No, it won't complicate the ions. So yeah, weak acid won't completely ionize them. Ionize in what? It won't complicate ions in what? That's the weak acid. Ne? It will never. Uh, and then the other one is dilute acid. It always have a more, uh, sort of like more amount of water that must be added. It needs more water. It needs more water added to it. Eh? Needs more water added to it. Water added to it. Eh? So it needs more water added to it. So that will be the difference, I think. Yeah, the other one won't completely ionize in water. The other one needs more water to be added to it. Eh? So then, yeah, that'll be that. So let's quickly go. I think there's a big conclusion coming. <laughs> so they're saying this 500 of that, of sodium, what, what, add to another 500, and then of that, and then that, and that. Okay. So the direction between NOH and HCl, exothermic or endothermic. So remember, if it's endo, yeah, it will absorb the heat. Yeah? So they say the temperature rises and the pressure and the solution. So the temperature is rising, meaning there must be some heat being released. If the temperature is being is rising, if heat is being released, remember, if heat is being released, therefore we are having an exothermic because temperature is being released out. The thing will become hot if it, that flask were to touch it. So it will be exothermic friction. Then they calculate the final concentration of hydrochlorium uh, ions. The case one has to find the final concentration. So I'm going to put this one here. So now, what am I given? I'm given, yeah, they give us the pH. Oh, that's nice. So remember, if they give you the pH, it becomes easy to find the concentration. So remember, if you're given pH, P 
pH that they give us is 2,3. So if they give you pH né, and you want to find the concentration, we'll just do the inverse. Né? But since it's 3 max, it will be max for the formula, for example. So it will be negative H3 or plus. Né? Okay. Uh, and then uh, pH is 2,3. Then negative log that. We're going to get all the 3 max. <laughs> so they define the uh, concentration now. Just have to go and do 10 to the power negative pH, no? which will be 10 to the power negative 2,3. No? Then, then that will give us what? 10 to the power negative 3. Mm, a lot of decimals there. So it will, it's giving us uh, 5 times 10 to the power negative 3, or just 0, 0, 0,005 no? mole dm. Well, the M minus uh, 3. That will be our concentration. Which is lovely three max to get. I think they'll be giving max for formulas and all those type of stuff. Ne? Okay. So let's go to the one which is 8 max. Sure, that looks scary. When you look at that, the first mind will be like, whoa. That is scary. <laughs> yeah, battery is running out. into need to finish up first. Okay. First thing first, they're asking us to find the initial concentration. Uh, of NOH. Okay, remember that's NOH there. It's also HCl. That's what what they want us to find the initial of NOH. Ne? So now can I find something about HCl now? Okay, there's volume of NOH there, which is being added to 500. Or oh, they give us the concentration of HCl there. So the concentration of HCl which they gave us there, which is 0.25. And then what is the volume? Remember the volume is 500. Meaning I can find the concentration. Okay, let's find the initial uh, concentration, initial moles, initial moles, initial moles of XCL. No? So remember, how do I find moles? N is equals to CV, no? that's the formula to find number of moles. Maybe they'll give a formula for that, I hope. <laughs> so what is the concentration? The thing is 0, 0.25 no? of XCL. So it's 0, uh, 0.25 and then times volume is 500 centimeter so remember every year it's in dm there it's in centimeter meaning you must convert from centimeter to the dm and then to convert from centimeter to dm we normally divide ne, by thousand to from, divide by thousand ne. so you must divide by thousand so 500 divided by 1000 that will be 0, 0.5 ne. so from cm to dm you divide by thousand ne. and uh, it's, it's clear that it's in this one it's in concentration there is in dm that's why the volume must also be in dm so i'll divide by thousand that will give us the thing and then just to multiply the two 0 0.25 times 0 0.5 okay so basically it's 125 basically it's 25 times 5. Hmm. i didn't think about that way <laughs> so there'll be 0 0.125 moles ne? that'll be the moles of xcl ne? at the beginning so now remember something needs to be done we need to have something at the beginning and also at the end, or after something has been done to it, no? at the end. So remember, at the beginning, we're having 500 of NOH being added to 500 of XCL, meaning the solution now, that when I had V, we'll have 500 of NOH and also 500 of XCL. No? So you can have those two added to each other, 500 of NOH and also XCL, meaning the total volume now will be 1,000 centimeter yeah that'll be the total volume now which would be 1000 centimeter so now remember uh what did i find before or oh, remember once you add everything the ph was changing so meaning the ph if the ph was changing now we know the ph is 2,3 but what was the concentration that we got before we got the concentration to be as so look what what so meaning that once everything is being added together now there'll be other moles we can get more other moles you can get after addition again CV. No? I hope they give a mark again. That'll be other moles, it will be CV. And then the concentration, remember, will be the new one that we'll have with the pH. Remember the pH we got before, I think we got 0 0.05. Yeah, that'll be the new concentration based on the pH that they gave us. No? So it was 0 0.05. And then remember the volume will be 1000 centimeter, but we're in dm, so you must divide 1000 by 1000, which will be one. So the new. Uh, moles here will give us 0, 0,005 moles. Hmm, okay, that now is starting to make sense. 
it's eight max what i'm getting there now hmm. so now we must check now so there must be a number of moles which can be in excess ne? just get the 20 at least the number of moles which will be in excess normally to get the excess moles excess moles now to get the excess moles you just have to minus the two ne? so 0 comma one two five minus 0 comma zero zero five which will be used ne? so 0 comma zero comma one two five Minus zero comma zero zero five. Yeah, that will be the one that will will react. Ne? So it will be zero comma one two. So this will be the number of moles of HCl which will react. Ne? Thank. You. That is for HCl. Ne? The number of HCl that will react. Just have to minus the two that you got. That will give you the answer. This was not as bad as I was scared with eight max. That's for HCl. The question was asking for what? NOH. Ne? Let's go back to the balance equation and look for the ratio. So I'm having one of NOH is forming one of XL. So it's one is to one ratio. Meaning also NOH. It's a one is to one ratio. Meaning NOH will be the same as HCL. Ne? Meaning NOH that will be reacting will also be 0, 0,12. Hmm. Okay. So the one has to find the concentration. Ne? Remember, moles it's N it's C V ne. Meaning concentration will be you have to reverse it will be N over V ne. Most we know it's always 0, 0,12. What is the volume? Remember the volume that is initial, initial volume of air. So the matter that they gave us was 500 centimeter. That was the initial one. The one what we use here, 1,000 was the one that was the mixture of the two. But the initial one was 500 centimeter, which means we need to divide by 1,000, which would give us 0, 0,5. So now 0, 0,1 0, to divide by 0, 0,5. Oh, I'm saying 0.24 mole dm3. So now I'm trying to look at this now. The initial concentration of HCl was 0 0.125. This one was 0 0.24, meaning we had more of NOH than HCl. Hmm, that's a nice one. So with this type of question, guys, always target a number of moles because you can always get number of moles which are going to react. Ne? And check whatever they gave you. They gave us uh concentration here and the volume we know which means it's easy to find moles once you get the most of that one which was the initial you can, you can get the one which was reacting and find the one that was reacting it was easy to find because the ph was given to us to find the concentration you do the normal inverse of 10 to the power negative ph that gives us the concentration the volume number will change now because we're adding two things together in one big in the volume will be a mixture of the two of them which will be 1000 then that will be your new volume. Then just go there and find the new number of moles. Then from there onwards, you must get the excess or the one which will be reacting. So you just have to go in and minus the two answers you got. Then whenever you get the answer, remember this is for HCl, ne? the one for NOH. So you must go and do the ratio now. The ratio will tell you uh, how NOH and HCl are linking to each other. Once you get the ratio, that will give you the N for the other one. Then again, the formula for concentration will be C. It's because N over V. Ne? Then just have to put the moles and volume as they are. And then depending on the question, just be careful of how the question to ask tomorrow. So that would be that. And then uh, so they're asking us to start on a new page now. So we're done with internet base. Okay, I feel like it was not as bad as I yeah, that's the max. They were nice on this one. Because most of the time internet base tends to be a bit hectic than the one that they give you. So maybe the next questions are gonna be tough. Let's see. So next one now it's uh, electrochemical cell ne? which is galvanic you know that is galvanic so now they are having a zinc powder and a copper powder there's also h2so4 inside there so in a test tube bubbles of gas are observed while in test tube b no bubbles are observed there's no bub something in number b which is something that will be a hint also so the question that asking us now is uh what do you think is happening uh, in the other bulb the other one is having a bulb the other one is not having anything so remember if you, whenever you form bulbs, the reason why they don't like using uh, gases here because you can form a bulb. So which gas do you think will be present? Whenever you're forming a bulb, a bubble, there'll be a, a gas. In it. So when having a gas, therefore the the bubbles will start forming now. So look at this now. Which gas can be chlorine? There's no Cl there, but there's H2 there. Remember, which gas can form from H2? Hydrogen. Eh? If there was Cl there, then it would be chlorine gas. But it's because it's H2 it just becomes a hydrogen gas. No? They're asking us to refer to the reducing, reducing abilities of Cu and Zn to explain 
why no bubbles are formed in a in b so let's go and compare z n c u and z n so i'm going to show you guys how to compare them i want to compare c n c u and z n so let's go and compare in them the arrows will direct us now the arrows will direct us these two arrows are going to direct us on how to solve this so remember the c u that we're going to use is the one we're using to e i saw you now now so that was having two e. I don't know. I find you see that is having two e. Oh, there we are. This carbon here, and then where's zinc? Zinc, where are you? Oh, zinc is there. Let's compare the two arrows now. So you see here, when you go up, there's an increasing reducing ability, meaning Zn Zn has a higher reducing ability ne? than Cu. Ability than see you than see you based on this set n is good higher reducing ability than see you the arrows telling us when you go up there we are increasing the reducing ability meaning that n is good higher reducing ability than see you same thing will be opposite see you will have the higher oxidizing ability than set n sharp so don't forget that n is good higher reducing ability than see you so they're asking us to compare that ne? So therefore, you know that Zn higher reducing ability, ne? ability, ability uh, than Cu, meaning um, Cu won't reduce um, the other one. Uh, won't be able to reduce. Uh, Zn, but then my question is, uh, they're talking about the hydrogen gas now. So let's go back to hydrogen gas because if they're talking about the hydrogen gas, I can't compare Zn and Cu alone. Let's also include hydrogen gas now. Yeah, just want to get hydrogen gas. I think it's zero. There it is there. You see now again also, hydrogen gas is there. Cu is there also. Hydrogen gas is having higher reducing ability than Cu, so therefore Cu can't reduce hydrogen gas because it's lower than it now. So again, Cu won't reduce uh, hydrogen gas because it's weak in terms of reducing ability. Né? Because it's weak reducing ability. So you can't reduce hydrogen gas to form the bubbles. Né? So it won't be able to reduce its weak reducing ability. So it won't be able to reduce uh, hydrogen gas to form yeah, to form those bubbles. Né? So you just don't look at that. Look at the table, compare the two. Or the three they would give you the answer or how you can explain the whole thing so the arrows are telling you what's got the higher or the lower reducing ability so remember the aim here is to form uh the hydrogen gas so meaning our focus must be on hydrogen sometimes the aim will be on cu and zn but since we're talking about the bubbles we must focus on the bubbles so we must compare cu and the hydrogen uh, gas to see if the bubbles will be formed so let's quickly now finish up. Yeah, my battery is dying, guys. I hope the light will keep up. Okay, let's just quickly finish up before the battery dies. So using the standard reduction, or using the standard reduction potential table, and then the balance equation that occurs in the selection, asking us to find the balance equation. So remember, you must go and look at the selection now. We have got Zn, which is there, and then also oh, asking about number A. Remember, um. Just to remember, A, I'm assuming it's this one. They didn't even label them. I think, yeah, the bubbles are there by the air, but number A will be this one. It's not even clear. So people must respect learners as well. So A is that one. So A at A, we're having ZN. So if at A, we're having ZN, direction, it just need to be a combination of ZN and the other one of, of as you can guess. So it'll be ZN. The other will be 2H+. Plus, and they're going to end up forming, uh, you know, it'll be ZN, 2+. plus. And also, I didn't guess. So we're going to combine the two of them. It will be Zn and also Zn2+. plus. Zn, we know it will be undergoing oxidation, the anode one. Then I think will undergo reduction based on the values. Remember, Zn has got negative 0, 0,76, which is low compared to 0. So Zn has got negative 0, 0,76, which is low than 0. So if you have got a lower value, remember, the higher the value, the more cathode it becomes. Né? The lower the value becomes anode, meaning yes, that n becomes our 
anode next. That's why it's going from Zn to Zn2 plus it will be oxidized. Ne? Same thing again will be reduced. So that will be the exchange for number A. For number B, they didn't ask. So I'm just going to skip it. So they're asking us now that the chemical cell was set up using the following now. They have having Mg and also Ag, which is uh, what do you call it, silver. So they're asking us to have the reaction for this. Let's go and compare Mg and silver based on their values. Now. So I want to go and compare Mg and silver based on their values. Let's look for Mg and silver based on their values. That's Ag there. I found Ag. Ag is 0, 0,8 there. Okay. So Mg is 0, 0,8. Let's find Mg now. What oh, Mg is up there? Negative 2,76. Meaning Mg is smaller than Ag. So Mg will be our anode. Ag will be our cathode. Ne? So meaning Ag will be reduced. Mg will undergo oxidation. Ne? So they want us to write the, the small reactions. So second reaction will be Mg starting first. And then uh, it will go a first change. Forming Mg2 plus. That's our, our anode part. Ne? Then we get the salt bridge. Then we go to the cathode part. Remember it will start from Ag plus. First change. Then Ag. Ne? That will be... Max, wow, that's nice now. <laughs> so asking us for the two conditions. Remember the two conditions that must okay. There are three of them. There are three conditions that must be there. Now. We must have temperature at 25 degrees. We must have pressure at 180 m. We must have concentration at one mole dm. Now. Those are the three conditions. I just want you to have two from this one, for example. But those are the three conditions. Eh? I just want you to have one. So they're asking for two. Those are the three conditions that you must always know. Eh? So that would be that. So let's quickly have space here. Do you want us to find the initial EMF now? So the formula is there on the formula sheet. Because you guys can lose such frameworks eh? for the formulas. So it's E cathode minus E anode. Eh? Then remember, uh, Cathode would be your, our Ag. Ne? What was Ag again? Um, cathode would be Ag. Ag, where are you? Ag was 0, 0,8 and another one was negative 2,36. Ag was 0, 0,8. So Ag was the cathode one, which was silver. It was 0, 0,8 minus anode was negative 2,36. Ne? So just have to add the two of them now. 0, 0,8 plus 2,36. That's 3,16 V. That is 4 max, guys. Wow. That is 4 max. Wow. This does get interesting and lovely. <laughs> okay, let's quickly finish up before the battery dies. This this cell is now connected to a light bulb which is marked 3V and 6W. Okay. In theory, the bulb should glow, but in practice, it doesn't. Know. Without any calculations, give any explanation for this. Ne? So now, the 6 W, W means power. W is power because it's watts. So this is power, which is watts. This is voltage. Ne? So now, is there any formula that will have uh, power and... Um, is there any formula that, that, that will have power and also voltage? Let's go to the formula sheet. Most of the formula sheets will assist in that regard. Ne? So when you go to the formula sheet, you look at the formulas. Is there any formula that will have power? Nope. They didn't give any here, uh, which I think they will mean to you guys. Because they're supposed to give you a formula that will have power and also what do you call it? Uh, which will have power and voltage since they're the two things which are present. So now this means that now you must look at yourself now. Uh, which formula can I use? There's one about voltage and resistance. No. There's also power and in this formula I know about power. Power is equals to VI. Ne? That's the formula we use mostly for physics. Power is equals to VI. So they give us voltage and also power. Meaning power is 6 based on what they give us. Ne? Voltage is 3 based on that ratio they give us. Yeah. So now, therefore, meaning you can find current. So this will be current will be 2A. Ne? So the current there is 2. Ne? So they're saying that, yeah, the question was saying that. The bulb should glow, but it does not. So now this means what? What's happening? Therefore, the current we're getting won't be enough. 
So they're asking us what's, why it's not uh, glowing, meaning that the current that we're getting is not enough. Not enough current. Because if you don't have enough current, the bulb won't light. So I think the only way you can think of explanation is the not enough. Not enough current. The current is small. So they must increase the... Remember, for us to get a bigger current here, uh, P must be high, the power must be high, or the voltage must be less. So they must decrease voltage for us to get a bigger current. Because there's no way the thing will light if the current is low. So yeah, that'll be that. It's only one mark. Okay. That explains. They don't want us to think too much. So this calculate the max, minim, maximum loss that occurs at the anode. Okay, they want the maximum loss now. So now I need to think about uh, the maximum loss of mass. The one mass, so M must come in somewhere there. So now the first thing that must come now, we know that the mass is going to be required now. So we must ask ourselves a question now. What is happening in this anode? That's our anode, which was having uh, Mg. Ne? So our anode was at Mg. So we know that magnesium was writing with uh, silver, which is fine. So now, again, let's look for the number of moles. Uh, as we know that we always look for number of moles. Is there any concentration that they're telling us that is happening? There's a volume of uh, electrolytes, which is 0 0,4. Or oh, the volume is 0 0,4 there. So we know that to find number of moles, again, like with excellent base, ne? The number of moles is CV, and then we know that uh, the concentration must be at one mole. Ne? Yeah, those are the conditions. Concentration must be one mole. Volume they gave it to us uh, as 0, 0,4, meaning one times 0, 0,4 would be 0, 0,4. So the number of moles which will be there of the solution, our solution was what again? Mm, where's the thing? Where's this direction? Our solution is yeah, NO3. That will be NO3 as our solution, NO3. So, mean and everything that we're having here will be remember with its silver one, Ag NO3. No? So, NOG3 that we're having is 0, 0,4. Then, remember the question is asking us to find the maximum loss at anode. Anode we're having magnesium. No? Anode we're having magnesium. So, they need to find the magnesium one now. So, what is the ratio on the balance equation? We know that for two of Ag NO3, no? we are forming one Mg. So the two is to one ratio. Ne? So so remember, NO3 we have got so just solve this one in this ratio. So I know for every two Ag NO3, I'm forming 0, 0,4. Ne? One Mg will form X. Ne? This will be cross multiplication, cross multiplication. So two X will give me 0, 0,4. Then I divide by two. Two X will be 0, 0,2, meaning the number of moles of mg will be 0, 0,2 moles ne? so let me just squeeze up here so i've got n for more mg which is 0, 0,2 so they want mass my mass is n times the bigger uh, mass which is the molar mass moles is 0, 0,2 what is the molar mass of magnesium we did this before it was 24 yeah it was 24 so that's not about magnesium again second time that's not about magnesium in the calculations, so it will be 0, 0,2 times 24. 0, 0,2 times 24. Yeah, that'll be 4,8 4,8 grams of magnesium. That's the question. I guess I have to find the concentration based on the volume that they gave us. Wow. So I could get the moles. I found the moles for each, and the ratio helps us to find the other one. That's it. How many max? Six. Wow, that's a lot of max. Sure, okay. So you're just asking for the mess and that's it. Hmm, okay. Let's just finish up. So let's, question number nine is the last question. Wow, we're at the end. <laughs> okay. Question number nine, the electronic sound shown is used to purify impure copper. Okay. Copper sulfate solution CuSO4 is used as an electrolyte. Electrol B contains 95.7% Cu by mass. Hmm, okay. So is electrode A positive or negative? Okay, now that's a good question now. We need to first think here. So we're having a power source. We're having CuSO4. And then there's 95 point, uh, what do you call it? 95.7% of um, Cu by mass, which is this part here. So the question is, is A the positive or the negative electrode? So you must ask yourself a question now. The positive, remember, the positive electrode will be the anode, ne? Negative electrode will be the cathode. Ne? So they're basically asking you, is A anode or cathode? 
So now there's a mess here of C unit. The mess of C here is giving us an indication that there's a bigger mess here. Remember, S direction proceed. Ele electrons will always go from anode to cathode. Ne? S direction proceeds. So meaning you expect the cathode to gain mass. S direction proceed. You expect that the cathode will gain mass. Meaning if the cathode is gaining mass, B must be cathode. Meaning A must be anode. So if, remember, positive electrode is anode. Negative is cathode. Meaning A... Uh, just go back now. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, electrode B contains C by mass. Eh? Just to be careful now. The question is, is this one is having a mass of that one and the other one. Okay, that's fine. This one will apply here. Because I'm using a power. So meaning... One must be anode, one must be cathode. So now we will be cathode, we will be anode. The CU here, uh, it undergoing reduction or um, what do you call it? It's undergoing reduction or oxidation. So they're saying that we are using, we are purifying impure copper. Uh, and then that's our, our electrolyte now. And then B contains that by mass, meaning B is having few of copper. B has few of copper now, meaning at B we have got few copper. At B, we're having few copper. Ne? At B, we're having few copper. At A, we have more copper. Meaning A must be bigger than B, in a way. So if A is having bigger, remember, cathode will have a bigger mass. So A must be where this cathode. Ne? And then which one is the negative electrode? is cathode. So therefore, A must be negative. Because A must be cathode. And negative electrode is what? It's cathode. Ne? Yeah, that's a bit of a tricky question. I needed you to read over and over again. So it seems like the questions are getting tougher in this last one. I don't know. The other ones were straightforward. This one looks like they're going to make you guys sweat for the last two minutes. Okay, we still have more than 40 minutes, which is good for me. <laughs> 9.2. Pure copper is used to make electrical wires. Give a reason why the copper must be purified first uh, before it can be used. Remember, if you're conducting electricity, you want, you want something that, that would be good for uh, conducting that thing so if we want to purify it the reason is to have a good wire because a good wire will allow us to have a good uh, conductivity ne? the aim is to have a good conductivity that's why you must purify it first to have a good uh, it must be able to conduct electricity very well because if it can conduct electricity if it can conduct very well then you'll have a problem so will the mass of B increase or decrease when the cell is operating so now will it increase or decrease of B? Remember? Or do you say that A will be bigger? So you expect B to be decreasing now. Because B is anode. If B is anode, as the recent proceeds, anode will start losing. So you expect B, which is the anode, to start decreasing now. B will be anode, which will start decreasing. So if B is an anode, therefore, they want the half friction. So you must get the half friction for anode. Remember, it's copper. So it will be oxidized now. Copper will be oxidized because it will be anode. B will be anode. So it would be having a lesser mess. So that will be your answer. 3 max. Okay, I think we're marked mark for decrease or increase. But then we know that B is anode. So it will be decreasing as it proceeds. So they're giving us, again, calculation. 5 max, which is the last one, by the way. So if two moles of electrons are transferred from anode to cathode during electrolysis, calculate the mass of the impure one. Again, remember, in the other ones, we're always targeting to find... Uh, the moles ne? so now you must ask yourself can I find the number of moles here there are two moles okay then there are two moles which are being transferred ne? two moles which are being transferred from anode to cathode so having two moles from anode to cathode ne? okay it's fine so direction remember for cathode will be like this for anode we know it's like that cathode will be like that so meaning we have two ions here, then here you have one. So the ratio will be like one is two. It will be like two is to one. Yeah? That will be the ratio two is to one. Meaning that um, we had two before. Now it will go to one. So meaning we're going to go from two to one based on the ratio. Yeah? So meaning now the number of copper there at 10 to one, yeah? the cathode will be roughly one. Number of moles, sorry, will be one. Yeah? And then now again, remember the aim is to find the one the mass. So to find the mass uh, of the impure, the one the mass of impure. Wait, is that mass purity? I think the one mass purity is mass of impure. 
the one the mass of np yeah okay mass of np so let's find the mass first mass will be n times bigger mass n is one and then remember it's copper what is the uh, mass of copper now we need to the picture table let's look for copper i know copper is down there let's look for copper now want the molar mass of copper where are you see you oh that's see you there is 63,5 copper is 63,5 sharp and then just gonna calculate the two one times that will be 63,5 grams ne? as our lovely uh, what do you call it lovely uh, mass of that one ne? so now remember if you're gonna find purity now to find purity now you need to you take the other mass uh, and then you divide by the other one ne? you'll be the impure one uh, pure and impure, then you multiply by 100. Ne? So, already have the answer for the first one, which is 63,5. And then the other one, uh, how do you let me just check what they gave us? Oh, the other one is the one that they gave us, which is 95,7. So, they already gave it to us 97,5. Man, sorry. So, this already given to us 97,5 times 100. So, 63,5 divided by 95. Is it 90? 95, why am I saying 97 here? Yeah. 95 comma 7, 95 comma 7 times 100. Hmm, that's a bigger mess than I anticipated. So it'll be 66 comma 35 to the nearest to this mile, yeah. grams of mess. Uh, that must be there of purity. Hmm, that'll be 5 max. So it's just about moles from the ratio, then you get the mess. Once you get this mess, you divide by the one that they gave you, which was 90. 5,7 at the beginning there. They give it to us the other one. So that's, that's why they give it to us so that we can find it at the end. Then you multiply everything by 100. That becomes your lovely answer. So this was the last question, guys. It was out of 150. I personally believe this paper was probably there were a few one, two questions which required thinking, but majority of them were straightforward. I feel like the multiple choice. I'm surprised by the multiple choice. It was as straightforward as you can get. But majority of the questions to me they were not hectic. There were some which required to pay attention, which I think I made some harsh decisions. But the good thing is that I was moving at a good pace. So you need to have the same sort of like patience when you do the questions. And it can be hectic if you are still in question number six. When there's like 30 minutes left, then you end up panicking. But if you can go through your organic chem, your multi trains, and your retroflexion quicker, that will give you time for chemical equilibrium. As well as it's in base, because it requires a lot of calculations there, as you saw, and you must pay attention. It's a big time you can make a mistake. One mistake will affect the whole ant. And then uh, I think you can just follow the way I followed them. I think that will help you guys. And I hope this video will be helpful for you guys. And if it was, you can leave it on the comment if you saw a mistake uh, or things we can improve on. I will always open for suggestions, but I hope that it will help you guys a lot. And also, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe. Also, you can share it to your friends. Maybe it will also improve their chemistry knowledge. And if some theory that I was talking about is not making sense, also comment. I'm more than keen to help you guys with chemistry before you write it. Same thing with physics. I'm going to do a video of physics as well, which will also help you guys. So this was the uh, trial exam uh, from Nipopo province. For this year so it was a lovely paper to be honest and i will see when i do yeah, physics paper one uh, physics as well how easy it was and then again guys if you've got questions feel free and thank you for your time